Hello, welcome back to Open, everyone. Uh, bueno, La Borinqueña. That's right, it's the name of the comic book created by New York native Edgardo Miranda Rodriguez that showcases a superhero that happens to be a Latina woman. And uh, through this character, Edgardo has uh, been bringing light to many social and political issues, including the recent hurricane in Puerto Rico. And joining us to tell us more about the comic book, we welcome writer and creator of La Borinqueña, Edgardo Miranda Rodriguez. Hello. What's up? What's up? Como esta? Uh, good. good. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad I did too. It's a long trip from Brooklyn. It's all good. Well, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the BX. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank, thank you. you for making your way all the way of course, over here. Of course, of course. Yeah, on a Friday morning, no less. We've yeah. been trying to get you for a minute now. I know, I know. I've been busy. Yeah, you've been very busy, <laughs> making a lot of noise. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how, um, I guess, this all came about, uh, Borinquena, as well, a comic book. As a comic book, the idea came to me that uh, the Americans were really, really obsessed with popular culture. We're more concerned with the box office revenue of blockbuster films than we are with the debt crisis actually affecting three million Americans in Puerto Rico. And I thought to myself, what platform can be used to actually bring these humanitarian issues to light? And I thought, well, I'm a nerd. I should use my, my, my um, platform and my resources to create a comic book. And in creating this comic book, I created a, a conduit to address these issues. When I do interviews such as I'm doing now with you, or when I'm doing special events or talking at universities across the United States, and I'm bringing the conversation to larger audiences about the decolonization of Puerto Rico, really addressing the fact that after 101 years under the Jones Act, uh, Puerto Ricanos are American citizens, but more especially after Hurricane Maria, it's been prevalent that we've been always seen and treated as second-class citizens. Right. So using popular culture with this comic book, I bring awareness to this conversation. Uh, the character herself is a college student. She's not uh, as, as well-versed or experienced as I am, but I write the book through the lens of a student because she's learning and seeing and understanding the world through her own eyes and experiencing the debt crisis in Puerto Rico, experiencing climate change, experiencing the discrimination through her own eyes, not through any lecturing or monologuing, but actually experiencing. For example, when she gets to Puerto Rico for a semester abroad to uh, finish her studies, she realizes that the courses that she signed up for are no longer available because the faculty had been laid off. And this is actual facts because many faculty at the University of Puerto Rico have actually lost their jobs right. and have actually come to the United States, and especially since the debt crisis has, has fallen over the last 13 years and more recently with Hurricane Maria, we've seen hundreds of thousands of Puerto Ricanos coming especially here to the Bronx, which is like one of the largest strongholds for the Puerto Rican community in the United States. So your, your, your origins are, you used to work with Marvel Comics, right? Yeah. And so now you have your own comic. Mm -hmm. How many editions do you have of this? Well, so far we have two, two graphic novel series, and then we have the anthology, Reconstruction, which I had the opportunity to produce with uh, the... Uh, guest appearances of DC comic icons. This year actually also celebrates the 80th anniversary of um, Superman, which is definitively the archetype of what is a superhero. So I had the pleasure of meeting with Dan DiDio, who's co-publisher of DC Comics, because he learned of my work just last year, just two weeks after Hurricane Maria. And after a, a great conversation of him um, pretty much like, like commending me for the work I was doing as an independent comic artist, I engaged in the, into the conversation of saying, what are we going to do for Puerto Rico? And out of that came this opportunity to produce an anthology that's 200 pages with about 150 contributors, not only heavy hitters in the comic book industry like Frank Miller or Tony Daniels, but also bringing in people from the entertainment industry like Rosario Dawson or Ruben Blades, who actually made their debut as comic book writers in this book. And this book so far has generated sales of $150,000, which we used to create the La Borinquena Grants Program. And just last Decem um, September, rather, we were there in Puerto Rico and distributed nine grants to local organizations across the entire island because we strongly feel in an effort to really decolonize Puerto Rico, we have to provide the resources to the organizations, to the actual heroes on the island that are doing the work and let them continue to do the work. Because this past September was the 150th anniversary of El Grito de Lares, the only staged revolu revolution in Puerto Rico, however, we, Puerto Rico is not an independent nation, but as people in the diaspora, 
we have the freedom and independence to decide how we choose to help Puerto Rico, and not just as Puerto Ricans, but as Americans. So I chose, along with my family and along with my friends, to go to Puerto Rico with the money we raised from this book to give back to these organizations. And organizations across the entire island, from Boquerón all the way in the north, southwest of the island to Culebras, which is just off the northeast of the island. You know, I got to tell you, it's amazing how passionate you are about everything that you're sharing. Thank and you. what I find most fascinating is that you chose to create a woman superhero. <laughs> well, the women have always been a part of my life. Um, I was raised by a single mother here in the, in the South Bronx. I was also mentored by an incredibly strong woman, Iris Morales, one of the original members of the Young Lord and a long time activist here in New York City, as well as Dr. Marta Moreno Vega, who founded El Museo del Barrio, and my cousin Lilian de Jesus, who is actually an, uh, a leader in education reform here in the Bronx. And these women shaped my identity, shaped who I am. And although I appear as a light-skinned um, Boricua, my family is a full reflection of the Puerto Rican diaspora. There's, there's some as, as negrita as you and darker. Uh -huh. And as a reflection of that, I wanted to embed that into the narrative, embed that into the actual character. And as far as the character was going to be, it was always, always going to be a woman. There was never a debate in my mind whether it be a man or a woman. Because Is she the when only I think, Latina superhero that exists? Well, there, there are other superheroes that have existed in both Marvel and DC, but she's the first superhero to be unapologetically patriotic. And her origins are the first time a superhero's origins are de deliberately linked to the mythology of Puerto Rico. I also love that you use indigenous language in, in her development, right? Because well, most comic books are derived either from um, mythology, the stories from the, from the Bible, from Greek mythology, from Roman mythology, from Norse mythology, but no comic books have actually ever been created that have made a, a mainstream impact that derive from, well, narratives or mythologies from our experience. And there's so much rich mythology in Puerto Rico. It's a, it's a nation whose mythology is rooted in matriarchy. It's rooted in the power of femininity. We, our mother goddess is actually Atabe. Atabe, that's yeah. right. And so before we go, um, <clears throat> What kind of impact has this had on the next generation? Because you designed it in comic book form, which I think is very clever in making Thank sure you. that the next generation gains interest in their history. Well, it's, it's something magical because when the project first debuted at the Puerto Rican Day Parade just two years ago, and we had a young woman, Stephanie Martin Janis, who um, is a lawyer and an and activist, she dressed as La Borinquena, and as she walked up um, Fifth Avenue during this parade, Young people, young black and brown Puerto Rican children, for the first time saw a hero. And I think back when you were a child, the first superhero that you saw. Now imagine that that first superhero that you saw actually had your patriotic colors, your skin color, your hair texture. So there's something psychologically that's shaping the way children are going to see themselves in the future. My book is a part of the New York Public Library System, as, far as, as well as the Brooklyn Public Library System, and libraries across the United States. But it's accessible to everybody, so you just don't have to it? buy it. Well, you can go to any library to borrow the book, or you could actually go to our website, which is la boringkenacom or you could come see me this Sunday at the Bronx Museum. Or we'll be there all day for the artisan market, an event that's actually celebrating adolescents, teens, and trailblazers from the Bronx, and it's giving opportunities to artists and, and vendors alike to not only like sell their, their goods during the holidays and give you an alternative to the, you know, the big stores, and actually give you an alternative to actually support local businesses, right, local but also artisans. introduce you to like beautiful stuff that's actually happening here in the Bronx. And that's this Sunday all day at the Bronx Museum. Awesome, thank you, of Edgardo, course. for coming all the way from Brooklyn and sharing all this wonderful knowledge course, with thank us. You, Rina. And you guys, once again, you can catch Edgardo this Sunday at the Bronx Museum of Arts Artisan Market Teen and Trailblazers. That's right, that's happening on Sunday, December 9th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And of course, for more on Edgardo, Aldo Miranda Rodriguez and La Borinqueña Comics, you can visit laborinqueña.com. We do have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll talk to R&B singer Joe Fuego. Don't go anywhere.